What's good ladies and gents, welcome to the MKO Pugilism Boxing channel where we talk all things boxing. Remember to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And anyway, let's get into this one. So, um, about two days ago now, uh, we had a press conference uh, led by Tyson Fury and seemingly called by Tyson Fury. It was in his hometown of Morecambe, which is um, it's north of... Uh, Manchester, very sort of far away from anywhere in London. So he had this whole press conference. There was a lot of curiosity beforehand. A lot of people said, suspecting he's going to pull pull out or this is going to be some sort of bad news because it, it was kind of a strange thing to be having. I mean, considering we've already had the big trailers, we've already had the press conference with him and Usyk, a couple of press conferences there, big announcements and everything. And we've had the the Turkey Al Sheikh saying that look if if either man pulls out they're gonna have to pay 10 million fines so uh, there was a lot of speculation about this press conference what is it going to be about what what is the point of it what's going to happen I mean I heard beforehand that it was just going to be Tyson Fury so that didn't surprise me and to be honest with you what it turned out to be was kind of I would say a kind of Tyson Fury ego uh ego stroking session that that's the way i would sort of describe it because a lot of it was i suppose first and foremost trying to reassure the fans that he's going to be there may 18th and he was saying he's training hard and you know in the end they asked for predictions um sugar hill was saying yep he predicts he's going to be a knockout by his man tyson fury um, they were talking, Frank, they were just kind of all bouncing off of each other. Spencer Brown, uh, Tyson Fury's manager, Frank Warren, Tyson Fury's promoter. To me, they, they were just all kind of stroking his ego, just saying that, yeah, we know because of Daniel Dubois that Alexander Usyk is uh, weak to the body. And Frank Warren said, yeah, I knew that from the amateurs that he, he was weak. He got dropped by Baturbiev in the amateurs from a body shot. So... I was saying that before anyone else, and it's like, to be fair, Sugar Hill, to his credit, kind of, uh, you know, deflated that because he said at the end of the day, no, no one likes it to the body anyway, so we're not going to be sort of banking on that. Um, and with Fury, he was just sort of trying to give everyone a boxing history lesson, saying, oh, he's in shape, and that um, every time cruiserweights step up to heavyweights to the elite guys. They lose. They can be average heavyweights. Uh, giving examples like Evander Holyfield, Thomas Adamek, David Hay, um, saying that Johnny Nelson when he stepped up to heavyweight. I mean, to me, I can't remember. I don't know if he did. I don't think he did step up to heavyweight, Johnny Nelson, unless I'm wrong on that. Yeah, maybe he did, but I don't, I don't think he actually did. And he was just reading off all of these unsuccessful, what he called unsuccessful cruiserweights who moved to heavyweight and got beat. And I mean, to be fair, though, I think that there was a few kind of holes in his argument because just to point out two of them, right? Um, David Hay. David Hay, yeah, when he stepped up to the best heavyweight at the time, yeah, he lost to Vladimir Klitschko. But I still wouldn't call him unsuccessful because at the end of the day he was able to 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 unify a few belts at cruiserweight which is a big achievement and he was also able to go up to heavyweight and then win a belt at heavyweight against um that Nikolai Veluev who he wasn't nowhere near the best heavyweight but he was one of the biggest probably the biggest ever but yeah so David Hay yeah he might not have been the greatest heavyweight but at the end of the day he went up there and he won a belt at heavyweight. So I, w I'm not, I wouldn't really call that unsuccessful. I wouldn't call it a long reigning all time great heavyweight, but at least he went up there. He won a world title. Fair enough. Guys like Evander Holyfield, who he was talking of, he'd, you know, that's, that's another example that doesn't make much. I mean, that's even more of worse example. That's even worse example than David Hay because Evander Holyfield actually had some good success at heavyweight. I mean, you look at his victory over Mike Tyson, yeah, this is a part this is not the prime Mike Tyson, 
But at the end of the day, no one was really picking Evander Holyfield to beat Mike Tyson. He beat him not once, but twice. So, you know, that's that's a massive achievement. You know, they're talking about Big Daddy Bo, but Evander Holyfield was able to beat Big Daddy Bo and several other um, heavyweights. So Evander Holyfield, for me, you know, he was able to unify heavyweight. He was, he was able to win a lot of belts at heavyweight. So Holyfield, for me, made a, a very successful go of it. You know, great, great cruiserweight and very good heavyweight. So to, to use him as an example is a bit um, short-sighted in a way. And I think when when you talk about Alexander Rusik, uh, you, you can't really dis- downplay Alexander Rusik. Yeah, he, they say, oh, he had a bit of a hard time with um, with uh, Derek Chisora. Yeah, it's, it was a rough fight. Chisora was mauling and going a bit crazy in there. But at the end of the day, Alexander Usyk still won the fight very clearly, very handily. And not only that, he beat, you know, they say Dubois, okay, the Dubois low blow, make what you will of it. But at the end of the day, he still got up. He he took Dubois' shots and he, he stopped Daniel Dubois. And Daniel Dubois is a heavy-handed, uh, big punching, young heavyweight. So Usyk has proven... Time and again that he can handle it. Not only that, um, you look at what he's done to Anthony Joshua. Many people nowadays they're dismissive of Anthony Joshua. Oh, he's no good. He's this. He's that. But at the end of the day, Anthony Joshua was a unified world heavyweight champion, a two-time unified world heavyweight champion who would cleaned up belts. There's only one belt that he's ever been missing. That's the WBC belt, um, and he tried to make those fights multiple times. So. You know, Alexander Rusik has beaten, whether Tyson Fury likes it or not, one of the best heavyweights of this era in Anthony Joshua. And as I say, he's not done it just once. He's done it twice, you know, once and then in an immediate rematch. So Alexander Rusik has has already done what Tyson Fury claims that these cruiserweights can't do, which is beat elite heavyweights. And Anthony Joshua... You know, with all those belts he's held, he he definitely is one of the elite heavyweights. Um, you know, he's definitely right up there with the best, just based on his achievements alone. Um, but yeah, he was just doing that sort of. For me, it was it was just kind of stroking his ego, and it, it, in my opinion, I think um, what Tyson Fury was really trying to do here was, I suppose in one sense, appease the fans and get the fans going, get the fans, his fans riled up and, you know, convince us all that, yep, yeah, I'm not pulling out. To, so to give us confidence that the fight is definitely happening. But in the second instance, I think Tyson Fury was trying to sort of talk himself confident. He was, you know, saying things that would um, basically convince himself of how superior he is to Alexander Ruzik, of how great he is and this, that and the other. And I, I think a lot of it was to get people around him, stroking his ego, asking him easy questions so that, you know, he can answer them and he can he can look good and trying to bring out things from history. For me, it was a thing where, you know, one sense for the fan to reassure but in another sense it was just like an ego session where everyone there was just a yes man you had Dev Sani, Frank Warren who is you know he's supposed to talk up his vibe to anyone I would do the same in his position same with his manager they're doing what they're supposed to do and even to be fair Dev Sani same thing they're all people that you know they're on the payroll so they're just asking him easy softball questions and, um, you know, for Fury, it's just a way of building himself up. And I think it, it's him sort of saying these things to himself to to make himself feel confident. And <clears throat> for some fighters, I think, you know, Fury is one of them where he's excellent at the trash talk. And, you know, he said some funny things in there as well, things that it's, it's interesting how he gets away with them. Like, oh, this guy... He's just a foreigner who doesn't speak any English and that's why I can't really play the mind games with him, which is is quite the statement. I mean, it, it's 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 a racial statement, quite a little uh, racist statement, but um, I suppose it's one of them where because he's talking about another white guy, 
he can sort of get away with it. Whereas, let's say, if Usyk was a foreigner, but from you know somewhere else, it maybe it was a black guy or or a different hue or an Asian guy, whatever, then it might be looked at in a different light. But he he gets away with it, does Tyson Fury? So yeah, it, it was a interesting press conference, a bit of a strange occurrence, but. A, just more of an ego session for Tyson Fury. But anyway, let let me know your your thoughts about this in the comment section below. And until next time, it's MKO Pugilism over now.